Kid. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at a new project. So one of the things I've been over doing over time is building a dust collection system. And, and I've been using this hose I got off of uh, eBay rather cheaply. I got a huge length of this for about 40 bucks. Um, anyways, the, the idea behind this is what I've been doing is I've been using a rigid inch and a half system. Uh, and in, in the past, what I've been doing is inserting the tube in the hose. Now, technically, I can stick the hose all the way through, and this is an inch and a half coupler, I might, might add. And so what I've been doing is there are, are stops inside the coupler, and I've been putting the hose in here and epoxying it in with a whole bunch of epoxy. It's not really a, a neat solution. And the other problem is because it's the, the difference in size, um, as you can sort of see here, I don't get really a good look because a lot of times it ends up cocked like that when it dries. And so I want to come up with a better solution. So one of the things I got thinking about is I need to come up with a sleeve. So in short, the sleeve will match the ID of this. It's OD will match the ID of the coupler. Will be a bit larger than the tube, but yet have a flange to slide in the tube. So what I will do is epoxy the sleeve inside the tube and then epoxy the sleeve to this so it will slide in here and make a pressure fit which I can then just use a modest amount of epoxy and, and, and glue and then what should happen because it's going to be parallel to the sides of this I should get a nice uh, uh, looking fit so uh, kind of like this if you can see this rather than cockeyed like this like I've been getting so I'm going to go ahead and whip something up, but one of the things before that, I want to I want to get some basic measurements. And so as part of this whole series, I kind of want to show the whole process. So what I'm going to do is I got my calibers, and so my um, my ID. Now what, one of the things I like to do when when I get a piece like this, especially plastic, we're not we're not dealing with precision, I'll get it out, machine metal. So I like to kind of spin the coupler and, and pick the high side of it, and it seems to be within 0.1 one millimeter. So the, the smallest size is, is uh, 48.5. So I'll take that as my inner diameter. So my uh, uh, coupler ID is going to be 48.5. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my hose measurements, the ID. So my hose ID, and, and again, I kind of spin it around, is, is looking like about 38.6, roughly 38.6. Now I'm going to leave a little bit of room because I'm going to epoxy this here. So I don't want a super tight fit, just a snug fit. So um, while I was talking to you, I forgot the number. That's what happens when you get old. So, whoops, oopsie. So I'm going to talking basically 38, roughly 38.6. So my hose ID equals 38.6. And again, these, these are millimeters. And so again, one of the things I like to do is make notes, get these measurements down because it makes starting out uh, a whole lot easier and so uh, anyways let's hop over into open SCAD and let's whip up the part okay. now okay we're back inside the computer now so what I decided to do was whip up a, a quick uh, a sleeve here and uh, open open SCAD so one of the first things I did was as you can see over here is I've defined all my variables so I've set up all my parameters one of the things I do want to point out is you're going to swap IDs for ODs. So I had, if you will. Now I picked a couple other assumptions. Obviously the hose and base ODs were absolute. The base height, I decided a little bit arbitrarily. I didn't need a lot, so I set it at 10 millimeters because I don't want the hose to stick too far proud of the coupler. And then I wanted adequate space uh, for the sleeve to insert inside the hose to hold it rigid. So I picked 30, just again, rough estimates. And then I took a wall thickness of uh, three millimeters. Now, one of the things that I, I will print this at um, uh, 1.2 uh, millimeter wall thickness. So that will give me about 2.6. So that's going to be almost solid. So it's, it's going to be a pretty rigid uh, structure and I'll probably go 10 or 15% infill because again, most of it will be shell. The next thing I did is I came down here is I set up my module 
uh, sleeve. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, down here I defined my module. And from this, the first thing I did was really set up a union. So one of the things I had to do was over here, I've created a base, which is my first cylinder, if you will, right here. And then the sleeve on top sits on top of it. Now, one of the things that I do want to share and point out is this piece right here about translate. So one of the things that I do have, as you see over here, is center equals true. Now, one of the tricks that I use when uh, especially developing round objects or, or cylinder cylindrical objects, if I can spit it out, is I like to use center equals true. In this way, everything aligns on my z-axis as you see my axis here so everything piles up on, on the z-axis so it, it, it's both a good and a bad thing because um, and one of the things I'll show you so so if we take out this this variable here that I've set and so I'm gonna copy it and just put a zero and then I'm just gonna hit um, if I see here f5 now see what happens is this drops this base down so it's centered in all axes. So I'm centered on the X, Y, and Z axes. And if I would do the same for this, then this would become centered and it just simply wouldn't work. So the idea is, is you have to translate your objects up. Now the good thing about it is, is, is it, 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 by natural... Um, I don't want to say tendency, but just the way it works is if you do it with true, everything aligns center-wise on the Z, which is really nice for working with round objects because then you don't have to worry uh, about alignment issues. Uh, you just have to worry about the stacking. So what I do is I just translate up. So one of the things is you just notice that it split the difference between the two. So I took the base height and I divided it by two and then obviously it made it sit right here on uh, the zero uh, axis of, of the Z. So that's what I did. And then what I did for the next one is since I needed it to sit on top of that one, what I did was is I took the height of the base. Now I needed the full height of the base in this case and then half for the whole sleeve height. So after you do this a while, it, it, this may seem confusing, but it be, just becomes second nature. Is if I had three objects, then the first two, the first two objects on the bottom would be full, and then the the top one, whatever object I was translating, applying the translation to, would be a half. So just a good rule of thumb to to do that. And uh, so just just kind of handy little tip. Um, what else uh so so after creating this union bringing these pieces together i added in a difference now of course the difference comes before the union but when i write the program actually write the program i'll write this section first and then throw the difference in uh later because i want to see what what i create first now one of the things i'm going to do is i'm going to drop in a percent sign so you can kind of see the difference and then just do a recalc on this and and you can now, one of the things, the reason it does that is I've added two here. So what if we didn't add two? Well, let's take a look. So I removed the two, but now notice the strangeness. And if I, if I, especially if I remove the percent sign and then press F5 to re-render it, see this? Now, I, I've printed it, I printed objects out like this and they've been okay. What I always worry about though, is it truly manifold because long story short, it from so it potentially depending upon how things come out mathematically um, I'm always afraid that I'm going to have a, a manifold issue so just kind of long story short to avoid that I just pop in usually a millimeter on each side <clears throat> especially if it's not going to impact anything and uh, it just makes makes for a complete manifold you know so I'm sure I get a manifold out of it and it's watertight so uh, just kind of another little trick that I use, and, and again, I've uh, I've uh, translated this up and centered it, and you'll you'll notice again if I go back to um, put the percent sign in to display the object, I got about a millimeter hanging over each side, so you know no big issues there, so that works out very well. Other than that, it was a very simple build, uh, however, a very practical one because now I have a piece of code that I can reuse as I need to. 
Um, for my facets, I just left it at 60. I don't have to get fancy. I could probably even go on a little bit lower, but it's okay. Um, I tend to like to work around 60 for rough objects. And for finer objects, I do go to 100. Um, I think that's pretty much about it. So again, I'm sending this, I'm, I'm rendering this. So I do the typical F6, I render this out. So the, the mesh is now rendered or it's rendering it. The computer's doing quite a few things right now. It's my laptop. And then saving it out to an STL and I'm sending it off to uh, the Fabricator Mini. And so uh, to be uh, printed, because Fabricator Mini has been doing a lot lately and this is a nice small object and it's great for prototyping. So anyways, let's go take a look. Let's uh, print it out and let's take it back to the bench, see how it all fits together. I'll throw a time lapse up there in the window and window as we sit at the bench and let's see what we got. Okay, welcome back. We've got the uh, part printed out and so it uh, came out pretty good. Printed it out on the Fabricator Mini in uh, red PLA. So uh, I'll put the time lapse as I'm doing this. Not a long time lapse um, in the corner here. So I want to kind of show how all this works. So the idea is, is that now this has got a nice snug fit to go in here. So uh, what I'll do is I'll, um, when I go to use this, I'll actually just put a little bit of epoxy on here. And it's got a pretty snug fit, so I won't need a lot. Um, Actually, some probably regular uh, glue or super glue would even work, uh, but I kind of like epoxy. So, but but anyways, now you see how this forms this sleeve or flange, uh, kind of like a compression fitting. Um, one of the things the Fabricator Mini didn't do a very good job. You might remember in the, in the video I mentioned about putting um, a bevel on here of about a quarter millimeter to make this slide in. That didn't do too well in the um, uh, on the Fab Mini. Anyways, um, kind of came out a little bit rough. But anyways, that that aside, uh, now what happens is again I have this piece, this this inch and a half uh, junction, and it's got a ridge in there. And then all I do is is slide this in. And actually, the friction fit is um, pretty darn good. And and, and again. Wouldn't take too much. Now, one of the things to kind of notice when, that I was talking about before is the the sleeve sticks a little bit proud of the um, coupler. And so this keeps the hose straight. It looks actually very nice coming out of there, which is one of the things I wanted to do. Because, again, going this way, what a lot of them I have is, is they're crooked in there, sort of like this. And then even when I try to straighten them out, because it's epoxied in there crooked, uh, it doesn't uh, look very attractive. Now this looks very nice. This this looks very nice and neat. Um, you know, a, a, you know. Actually, I could um, I could probably print an entire piece of this adapting this hose. But one of the reasons I want to go this route uh, is this is so cheap. Again, I picked this up for I don't know just thirty five. You know, probably about thirty five cents. I think I paid for these in a contractor bag. And by the time I paid the other time and electricity to print these, um, and probably have to epoxy them for wear because of, of the striations and everything, it, it's just really cheaper to go this route and make the coupler that just goes in and, and attaches like that rather than try to print this whole thing as, as one particular unit. Um, so that's the main reason. You know, and the second thing is is the way that this is set up to receive because this is itself is a bit tapered. Um, and it just makes it easier than I can just use, um, you know, inch and a half PVC pipe in the system, which has really been working out good um, for me. So anyways, hopefully you found this interesting. Um, again, the code will be on the site so you can use it and make your own adapter. Uh, again, it's parametric. So if your hose is in this size, it doesn't matter. Make it any size you want. Just put in the numbers. And again, hopefully you learned a few things about translate in this case, um, about how to translate up using uh, center equals true and sort of some of the, um, a little bit of the simple benefits of utilizing center equals true in, in OpenSCAD. And uh, anyways, hey, like it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe. A lot more of these coming. I love working in SCAD, so I do most of my designs in SCAD now. So uh, you'll see a lot more of these videos and code coming out. Cheers. Cheers.